Today I am working on a 2011 Chevy Tahoe two-wheel drive um, customer complaint wheel bearing. I already replaced the front wheel bearings, those were distraught. Um, this car has been sitting for a really long time, um, so I don't know if you can hear the sound. I'm going to try to pick this on speed. So you kind of get like a little humming sound and stuff. Um, so you get humming and growling and um, the front was a, little, a lot more worse. You could definitely hear it. So now we got the rear. Um, so I got to check the, the bearing for the differential. We're going to go ahead and lift it up and see where I can pinpoint that bearing noise. Let's see if we can hear it. Yeah, so it's a pretty loud growling sound. Um, if you put some music, you won't be able to hear it. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and fix that. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. Take that back to the shop. Um, Got to do a few things with this car. Um, yeah, if you want to check out the front wheel bearings on how to do that, go ahead and look at my list. We'll have that video. I have a bunch of Chevy Tahoes. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Um, comment down below if you have any questions in regards. Since we're going to be dealing with the rear differential, um, you need to be very cautious with this. And then since we're doing the rear differential, um, we're going to be pulling out the wheels, see if we can spin the, the bearings on the outside. Um, it's kind of a little bit hard to pinpoint which side it is because it echoes out through the whole differential when you're trying to see which side wheel bearing is bad. Um, it might be coming from the center itself, but yeah, I think I'm going to try to see if we can point all that out, um, see if I can spin it up in the air, um, just where I'm at right now, um, I have a few cars in the garage, so I can't really do anything, flat surfaces, I don't have at the moment, um, but yeah, comment down below if you have any questions on that, and then we'll go ahead and start this video right after the intro. So I got the car all lifted up. Um, I lifted up from the center of the differential. Uh, make sure you put some uh, some blocks in front of the wheel so it doesn't um, slide right out the way. I'm kind of doing a slight little decline. Um, so again, make sure you have blocks on uh, both sides of the wheel. So I'm only having it on one side because I'm on my incline. So, um, anyways, I went ahead and. Um, supported the differential now if you're going to lift it up from the differential and then you're going to put your jack stands on the frame itself remember that the differential is going to go back down because you're lifting it up from the differential so you need to lift it up from the subframe to see what height you want it at because the moment you start letting down on the differential um the suspension is going to go down so as you're lifting it up it's going to be more height so right here I'm just supporting on those uh, this way bar itself right there. Try to get it as close as under that the flat spot right there. Um, I took off the spare tire just so it's easier um, to record. Don't want to take off that beam right there. Spare tire, um, obviously, pretty common sense um, for some of you that don't know. Um, basically you just use your, your regular key, um, pop it out from the bottom, I believe. Yeah, so you would, um, this is how it will, this is how this will sit, and then you'll push up the tab right there. Um, with, uh, you can use your key to, uh, squeeze in between here on the bottom and then pull it right out. Use your key to take off that lock right there, and then your tools. Right here, this guy will go in first. You need two pieces, and then for the other, for this side, your pull for the lug nut. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're just both on the same page. I have the spare tire to the side. You can take it off. It will make it a lot more easier. Um, I already took off the driver's side. Um, 
it's gonna kind of give you a rundown of the passenger side so for right here we don't need to take off the pads or anything unless you're gonna be replacing this now would be a great time um, I think these are, you would take off these 13 millimeters for the pads but we're not gonna go ahead and do that so we're gonna take off these two um, 18 millimeters so there's one right here it's on the caliper bracket so one and then two right there so there's the second one so we'll go ahead and take off both of those all right so now that we got it uh, the bolts off we'll go ahead and just pull this right back just like that and then we'll just set that right in here We'll just have it chilling right there. Um, if this guy falls down, don't worry about it. It's actually very light. Um, make sure your emergency brake is off so you can actually spin this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this with the uh, with the hammer uh, so we can break this free from right here. Now, if the, if the rotor's on there really tight, you need to probably hit it from the, the sides. So you'll probably hit it from right here and you'll end up kind of damaging it just a tad bit. Not too much. All right, so now we'll go ahead and spin this. So right here, this bearing is pretty jacked up. I can hear it. Um, the other side is not as bad, but I'm still gonna replace it. But the other side's actually leaking. I suspect that it kind of ran out of fluid. Um, we're gonna go ahead and check that out. We'll go ahead and tear that apart. Oh, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention, make sure you have clearance because we are gonna take off the differential. So, I, w I would say about, I think that should be more than enough right there for that distance. I would recommend leaving about five feet clearance on both sides, just in case you're gonna check out both. So I can move these cars so they're not in the way. Then right here, you can see how it's all wet. So yeah, it's all wet. Again, I already took this off. Yeah, so this wheel bearing is pretty jacked up. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to replace the, the bearing in the front with the differential. That sounds pretty jacked up too. We gotta take off the wheel speed sensors. Um, I already took off the passenger side. Now we're gonna take off the driver's side. Um, for the passenger, passenger side was actually pretty, it was on there. The bolt was easy to take off, but the sensor on there was stuck. So, let's see if we can pop this sucker out. You're gonna need a T30. Make sure it's fully seated in. Put it in and then put it out. Just kind of wiggle it around. Make sure there's no debris in there. And it holds firmly. There you have it. We'll take off that bolt. Then we'll wiggle this around and then get a flathead screwdriver so right here you don't want to pry against because you'll break it so what you want to do is get on the closest part towards the sensor and then just wiggle back and forth so left and right and wiggle wiggle back and forth left and right and there you have it. The other side was actually way more harder, but I was able to save the sensor without damaging it. Um, after you're done, you're gonna go ahead and clean this with the rag. So we'll just leave that right there for the time being. 
we're gonna go ahead and um I mean I don't think you have to take this off because it gives you a pretty good distance I think um, so I, it's supposed to sit up just like right up there so I think that should be enough clearance for you um, I'm just taking it off just for the demonstration purpose um, if it makes it easier there's um, you can take off one 21 millimeter uh, there's one right here and there's one more right there I think this one you gotta hold the nut on the other one has a a locking nut so you go ahead and take that off and then for right here basically what you do is you'll push in by hand and then as soon as the clip starts take, uh, popping out just a tad bit you'll go ahead and get your flat head kind of pry in between so you're not prying away you're kind of prying down at an angle so you'll kind of spin it so just like that once you get it down below wiggle it right out just like that it's actually a lot more easier with one, two hands than one and then we'll just set that aside right there um, we'll clip that back in and then, so I don't lose it um, I think we can yeah I'll probably support it with some straps or I'll just take it off but yeah you can either support it with some straps or, or something um, but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take off the differential cover um, for this little uh, sway bar um, it just unbolted the the other side and I didn't want to take off the sway bar in link so I just left it on and just dropped that guy down you can do the same too um, so we're gonna go ahead and take off all these 13 millimeter bolts and then for right up here we'll go ahead and take off this one and then we'll go ahead and take it off from the bracket so we'll take off this top one and then as soon as we take off this top one then we'll just go ahead and start taking off everything make sure you have a catch pan um, so you can catch all the fluid obviously Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get a pry bar or flathead, and then right here on these little tabs, we'll just pry on that. So right now I'm kind of looking for a little bit metal shavings. Um, I don't see any. Um, usually like to look at the, the cover itself, but right here, you can see a little sparkles at the bottom. That's normal, and then you can see right there that the magnet plug has some that's normal too what you're trying to look for is metal chunks I don't see none of that um, so yeah I mean obviously it's gonna be a bearing um, for the outer so we'll go ahead and wait until the fluid comes out this is a posi diff so it's not like the regular um, differential so yours might have this so some other people there's gonna be different um, I need to do a little bit more research and see what I got to do um, prior to taking this off. Alright, so now what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to find this locking pin that holds the differential in place. So right there you can see that bolt. So we'll just lower it just a tad bit. So right there we're going to go ahead and loosen up that bolt. I believe that's a 10. I'll find out right now. And that'll keep this pin right here locked up in place. Um, I'll get all the torque specs for this. Um, this is my first time doing the one with the LST. I've done the other ones without this little mechanism right here. Um, but, yeah, let me just bear with me on this. And, you know, I'll go ahead and tack it as we go along. So that's an eight millimeter. So I'll go ahead and see if I can pop this guy out.
Now what I'm doing is that I was spinning the wheel as I was um, um, trying to get the bolt to where I want it. And then I locked it in place with my hand. Or you can have someone else hold it in place. By the way, I have the car in neutral. Just so this can help up, help, or well, help the process speed up everything. Uh, once we take off this bolt, that pin should drop. And when that pin should drop, then everything will be all said and done. See right there. Make sure you inspect it for any metal debris. That's what we're, we're looking for is metal chunks. I don't see any um, shavings in here. Also spin the gear. Make sure you don't see any metal chunks. This is going to be your most expensive piece. The rest is all cheap on top on all that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a rag so I can lay out everything. So it's all clean. Put back on this pin. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and clean up the area. A little brake cleaner. And I'm going to start doing my marks. I'm going to be using a Bix whiteout pin. So we're going to put bolts for B. Obviously, it can only go in one way. We'll put B right there. So we'll have those two. And then obviously, we'll make a, a little mark for alignment for the bolt to pass right by. I think it only goes in one way. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now when you're taking out this pin, uh, I believe you have to take it out from this way. Yeah, you can't do up and down. So we'll go ahead and pop this guy right off. I'm going to be cleaning things as I go. So yeah, you can see the pin. pop out that pin just like that. I'm going on the on the bottom side of the pin just to pop out that. Then, once you get it partial out, I can't get my finger in there anymore, so let's see, pull it out by with a rag. Wiggle this right out. Make sure you don't squeeze too hard. We don't want to damage that area. We want to get that. Some things might fall. So at this point, should be able to take everything apart now you're gonna see your little wear areas the shiny part shining spots aren't your ears uh, your uh, worn areas so you see right here right here how it's all dull so 
right there too. Make sure that they're not chunked out or anything. This will cause your clunking. So you can actually hear clunking in the rear. Um, that's happened to me once. I've experienced that. So as you spin this, there's a little gear up right there on top, as you can see. So usually you're supposed to take all of this apart, but I've never done it with this guy right there. So the way how I have this guy set up um, right now, I got the pin out. I was having a little hard time with the pin coming out. So you're going to have this right here for the for the one with the locking differential. If you don't have the locking differential, just basically just take out the whole pin. And then when you spin the wheels, um, so if you're spinning the wheels right over there, um, the spider gears are going to fall out. That's no problem. Don't worry about that. You'll, you can put those back in. For this one, it's actually a little, a lot more pain in the butt. So once you take off the, we, once you take off that, make sure you're not spinning it. Cause then it'll, it'll be a lot more harder to put in. Cause you don't want these to fall off. Cause obviously it's more like a little puzzle. So we're going to go ahead and pop out that. So I tapped on the, um, on the base, so right here, I, t I, I tapped on right here until it, it bottomed out as much as possible. And so the one with the locking differential, you're going to go ahead and um, spin this. And then you'll notice at one point it's going to kind of get loose and it's going to want to pull back. And at that point, that's how you know you want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show that process. All right here, we're just going to basically spin this little, I'm going to start off with the passenger. I think that's the easiest side to start off with. So we're going to keep spinning this until we'll just kind of flick it right up. Uh, it's almost there, coming out. Okay, so now, just a little bit more. There you have it. So that's how you kind of want to pull it out. Just like that. So once you get that out, we can go ahead and pull out the wheel. So now we're going to go ahead and pull out the axle. Now, if it's, if it's pretty stuck on there, what you can do is get a slide hammer, bolt it right here. It'll be like a three piece, so you probably put one right here, one right there. Or you can probably do one two opposite and then use the slide hammer to do it. I just don't have one at the moment with me, so we're just gonna go ahead and tap this. So now we're going to go ahead and pop off this seal. So you have some fluid that might leak out, and if it does, then go ahead and uh, have something to catch it. Next, we're going to go ahead and take out the bearing. I already did it on the driver's side, so I'm just only going to show you on one side. Um, so you, one tool you're going to need is the rear axle bearing remover set. You can get this at AutoZone. Part number is 27129. So we're going to need the smallest one. It's going to be the one inch and a quarter. So this is the one that I got. So it's going to be like right there in the box. So it's going to be this bottom one. So it's going to be the smallest one. Remember that. The smallest one that you need. Alright. So along with that. You're going to need to get the slide hammer. So the slide hammer is going to be part number 27033. So you need that. So we're going to go ahead and put this. This is much thread that you're going to need for that and then we could just slide that right in 
I'll show you closer. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, make sure this is all cleaned up because we don't want debris in there. So we're gonna slide it in just like that. And then while it's in there, as it's going in, we wanna pull this guy right out. So we'll wiggle it. And then just like that, we want it flat. And then we're gonna go ahead and spin this guy until it gets compressed. Okay, so right there, you wanna make sure it's kinda of centered a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and slide on our slide hammer. We're just gonna thread this guy on. Okay, so once you got it thread on, like a good amount of threads, we're gonna go ahead and hold one end of the slide hammer. Make sure you be careful with your hands that you don't pitch it. So this one's kind of missing the handle right here. So I'm gonna hold it right here, and then while I slide the hammer, just like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And just like that, we have it out. So, right here, this is gonna sound like that. This is actually where your, um, the axle shaft is actually gonna go out, go on, and then this will be your wheel speed sensor is gonna be riding off this. So this is perfectly fine, this will be loose. It's actually gonna center itself once it gets on the, um, the axle shaft. Um, so here's the bearing itself. Make sure you measure it, make sure you bring this with you. Um, so you can measure the new one. Uh, you don't want to be driving back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and install our um, shaft bearings. And then before we put that, you can either put uh, wheel bearing grease or uh, some differential fluid. We'll just put the, the differential fluid. And then we're just going to go ahead and set this guy just like this. Make sure it goes in flat as possible and then the race tool that we're going to be using um, it's the one that's 2.555 so we're going to go ahead and use that make sure you're hitting the outer side right here and not the bearing itself the the rollers if you hit those um, you're going to need a new one so we'll go ahead and make sure you put your nut on this for the seal you don't have to put your nut on it just because it's more easier but just in case now let's say this kind of does go in cockeyed I did this intentionally on purpose so you see how right here it's more thicker and then right there it's it's a little bit um, more narrow so it, right here I have it more inwards don't worry you can bring down this every hit or every two hit, try to check it. So since I have this more out, I'm gonna focus my hit on this area. And then since we're pretty much almost there, make sure you good. So you're gonna keep on hitting until you notice that your sound be, um, changes. So you'll, you'll hear a more like hard sound instead of a hollow sound. So once we get that, 
and then uh, we'll be re we'll are ready to install the seal. And then for the seal, I'm going to be using the 3.180. Um, I got the seals from the, the dealership themselves. So this only can go in one way. The one with the, the top, hat, top hat lip right here, that's going to be on the outer side. And then wherever you see this little middle ring, that's going to be on the inside. So that'll go right exactly right there. We'll put this right here. And then until you hear a hollow sound, then you're good to go. This comes with grease, so you don't need our greasies. If they don't come with grease, either you lubricate it with wheel bearing grease or electric grease, or you can lubricate it with gear oil. So now at this point, we don't want to run this dry. So we're gonna go ahead and put some diff fluid. Just get it all right in there. And so this prevents any damages during initial movement. So we don't want it to be any dry than what it is. So this will keep it, this is this will keep the, the premature wear from happening. So I got a good amount of fluid in there to where it's almost coming out to the seal. Um, all the bearings are, are nice and soaked. So keep rotating it until you see gear oil all over the place. Um, that's it for this side. We're going to be pretty much ready to put back the axle shaft. We're going to go on the inside, clean up our area for the, the diff cover and all that. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and put in the axle shafts. I'm going to clean up the axle shafts. Um with a rag and some brake cleaner and then we'll go ahead and slide that right in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put in our axle shafts. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in. I'm putting these guys in dry. Just right here where the shiny spot is. That's the only spot that I'm that I'm actually gonna put some some actually some diff fluid. You don't need to put a whole lot, just just enough to coat it. And so let's say your axle goes in about that much and it doesn't want to go in anymore. So remember, you're not going to force this guy right in. You can get a flathead screwdriver. So right here, there's a little peephole where you can grab the shaft. You can use a flathead. And I'm just going to lift it up so I can align it. show on the driver side it's the same thing for the passenger side we're gonna go ahead and put it in and you see how it stops right there so we're gonna grab this shaft and push down like so we're gonna tilt up the front so that's what we want to do so it should just slide right in so I gotta go adjust one of the the blocking plates on the on one side it's good on the on the passenger on the driver side is good but on the passenger side it's I gotta fix it up a little bit but it should just slide right in all the way All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spin it by the yoke. Get this guy right up here. 
just kind of want to show you. All right, so right there on the left side, we're going to go ahead and put on our cotter pin. We need to push in the drive shaft, or I meant the axle shaft. So once you when you um, push in the axle shaft, you should be able to fit your cotter pin. I need to push it in just a tad bit more. Now, if you need to tap it with a, a hammer, in the center bore, then that's perfectly fine. Then go ahead and tap it. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that right in there. Oh, we gotta bang it in just a tad bit more. But I think this probably is stopping it. So we're gonna go ahead and you're actually supposed to do this in a certain position, but... Alright, so I hammered it just a tad bit in. See if we can get this guy to fit. All right, so we got that bad boy in. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, I had to tap it in just a tad bit, but just from where I'm at, it's kind of a little bit hard to get a good little pound. If you had someone else, they can pound it in until you're able to get that guy in. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and um, pull out the axle until this cotter pin is fully uh, seated in. So just like that. Now that's fully seated. See how it pops out and now it's in? That's how we want it. So we don't want it sticking out, we want it in. So we're gonna go ahead and spin it by the yoke. And now we're looking for the side that has the hole in it. So right there, we're gonna back it at an angle. Let's see if you can see that. So we want it at an angle just like that. Here's the hole right there on that side. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this guy in. Make sure you remember where the hole's at. Uh, so we're gonna have the hole right there. Slide that guy in. Now if this doesn't go in, you're gonna spin it by the shaft, the axle shaft itself, not by the yoke. Now it should slide right in. I was pushing against the, the shaft itself. And then put your hand on the bottom.
And then we're going to go ahead and put this bolt. And then you want to put some red Loctite on it. So before we do that, we're going to we're going to clean that out. I just want to make sure that this lines up. So yeah, that lines up. So everything is good on that part. So we're going to go ahead and put some red Loctite. Or I would, you know what? I would recommend blue Loctite. So put some blue Loctite. Um, because red Loctite, well, it's a it's a pretty small bolt head. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, blue Loctite, tighten that down. I'm gonna find out the specs right now, and I'll get right back to this video. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put our Loctite. Um, just literally put like a dab, and then that'll be it. So right there, just like that. Make sure you sh um, shake the the Loctite. I'm using uh, Loctite by 243, the medium. You can actually use the green one. That one will be pretty good too as well. But I've had the blue one for a while. And now they say, um, I think this is supposed to be torqued down to 16 foot pounds. Uh, but I don't know. I don't trust the, the whole 16 foot pound type of thing. Now I'll just say torque it to you feel it, that it feels good. Um, so we got that. Now we're ready to put on the gasket. Um, I didn't take off the, the drain plug or the fill plug. Torque spec for the fill plug is about 24 foot pounds. For some of you that actually really care about it, but not me. Um, gasket, make sure you get it. It's all aligned. Um, if you're having a hard time aligning up with the gasket, you can put the gasket on here first. Put like a couple spots of RTV. Now, if you notice any nicks or whatever that's damaged or anything, you can put some silicone in that area to help fill those uh, spots, those indentations. And to take off the fill plug, you're going to need a 3 8 ratchet. Make sure you put it in there. And then we're going to go ahead and fill up the thing with differential fluid. Um, I'm using 80-90. Recommended weight for this one 75-90. Um, so we'll go ahead and filler on right up. So once once the fill plug starts pouring right out, that means you're done filling it up. But we're gonna go ahead and spin the yolk and get all the fluid all over the place. pretty much have this filled up you want to keep filling up till it pours right out um, I used about three quarts and basically one way you can tell um, once you get at the three I have it at a little incline um, so once after spinning all the gear I know the fluid went in more um, so after you, you're gonna get your pinky and then just dab your finger and if you see it full of fluid then you know you're good to go. That means you're ready right there. Now, the more far, your finger is going to be the dipstick. 
So basically the fluid's supposed to be right here at the at the fill area. So if it's pretty close, no problem. Now if it starts getting down below and you can't see any fluid, then obviously you gotta fill it right up and and take care of that. Um, clean up your area. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put on the yoke, put everything all back together. Um, I'm not gonna show that. When you put back on the drive shaft and, and that, um, there's really no certain way you can put it, so you can't really mess it up. Um, don't worry about that. We're gonna go ahead and put on the crossbar. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and put everything back up and then I'm gonna go take it for a test drive and I'll get right back to the video on that. Um, just kind of pulling out just a little bit from my place and everything seems pretty quiet. Um, so I mean, so far so good. So I'm pretty stoked on it. Um, took a, a little bit longer. Um, just doing a lot of research, making sure everything is done right. That's that's a huge key in this in this process. Um, there's a few precision points that I didn't know. Um, I mean, it's like everything else. I mean, you get into the motor, the transmission, everything's different. So, obviously, doing a complete differential um, bearing replacement, whole another world. Um, but you know what? I think like the only most difficult thing was was putting on that carrier bearing back in place. And um, yeah, that, that, that was a pain in the butt to put back on. I, I kind of struggled on that one. So, like, it's pretty precise. So if you don't put it in right, um, I think you're just gonna have a hard time just kind of put it in. They do sell a tool so you can hammer in the, the, the spacers. But I don't have that tool, obviously, because I don't do differentials. But, you know, I, I told my buddy, I'm like, hey, let me do it. You know, I just want to do it as a pretty good learning experience and make a video on it. So to help you guys out. Um, now, if you have the differential off the vehicle, I think it will be a lot more easier to install the, um, the, the spacer. So if that was off, then obviously it will be more, more easier. But that's a lot more work. Um, job quotes for about five hours it took me a lot longer than that like I said I did a lot more research um, but as of right now we're driving the car and I'm at 55 miles an hour and you can sounds quiet so after you're done doing the drive-by um, go ahead and recheck your fluid make sure it's all all topped off again obviously everything is now circulating so drive it make sure it's leveled and then see if you need to add more fluid I'm pretty sure you just got to top off just a tad bit um, now that it's in the, the tube. Um, things I did forget to mention, don't forget your wheel speed sensors. Um, obviously put back on the the, the rotors and the, the caliper um, and then the sway bar link. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the results so I'm going to call my buddy so he can pick up the car. But again, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and then hit the subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and thanks for watching